Hey viewers, welcome back to my channel. So today our topic for discussion is brachial plexus. So what exactly is this brachial plexus? Plexus anywhere means a network of nerves or vessels. So here we are dealing with a network of nerves. So that is what we are calling it as brachial plexus because it is supplying your brachium. That is the your upper limb. So we are calling it as brachial plexus. So throughout the body if we see there are four such plexuses. One is cervical plexus. Other one is brachial plexus. Then you have got the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. So today we are going to deal in detail about the brachial plexus. So the upper limb which is there it will get its motor as well as its sensory supply. So the nerves which will supply the muscles of the upper limb as well as which will supply the sensory supply to the upper limb will arise from this brachial plexus. So we will go into the detail of the brachial plexus and in this video we will see how to draw this brachial plexus easily. Okay. This brachial plexus is formed by the uh, ventral or the anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 spinal nerves. Okay. So, the spinal nerve will have a anterior rami and a posterior rami. The anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 are uniting to form a brachial plexus. Sometimes, uh, the C4 root is involved. C4 root is involved. At that point, we call it as a prefixed type of brachial plexus. Sometimes, instead of C5, you will have C6, C7, C8, T1 and T2 will be involved. At that point, we call it as a postfixed type of brachial plexus. So, what are the parts of this brachial plexus? So, this brachial plexus, it is made up of roots. C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 roots. They will unite to form the upper, middle and lower trunks. Then they will, uh, these trunks will show anterior and posterior or ventral and dorsal divisions. Then they will finally form the medial, lateral and posterior cords. Finally, they will give up the branches. The roots of this brachial plexus which are there, C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1, they are present in between these two muscles, scalenus anterior and scalenus medius muscles. So, these roots further, they will unite to form the trunks. These trunks, the upper, middle and lower trunk, they are located in the posterior triangle of the neck. Now, these trunks, they will further show divisions into ventral and dorsal divisions. These divisions, they are located behind the clavicle clavicle and finally they uh, div the divisions they will form the cords they will form the medial lateral and posterior cords which are located in the axilla and then finally we have got the branches which are given off so this clavicle which is there so the part of the brachial plexus in uh, above the clavicle is called as the supraclavicular part that will uh, um, that is the roots and the trunks next the part of the brachial plexus below the clavicle, that is the cords and the branches, they form the infraclavicular part of brachial plexus. So, what we see exactly in the axilla during dissection is the infraclavicular part of brachial plexus. So, we will see how this brachial plexus is formed and what are all the branches given off by this brachial plexus. Now, let us see the formation of this brachial plexus. So, we said anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Okay. So, this is C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Okay. So, these are the roots. The anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 will form the roots of this brachial plexus. Okay. Now, what will happen next? The C5 and C6, the C5 and C6 which is there, they will unite together 
to form the upper trunk upper trunk c7 will continue as the middle trunk and c8 and t1 will unite to form the lower trunk so these are the roots okay next comes the trunks okay so c5 and c6 are uniting to form the upper trunk and uh, c7 is continuing as the middle trunk and c8 and t1 are uniting to form the lower trunk lower trunk okay now what happens next now these trunks they will further divide they will form the divisions they will form a ventral division and a dorsal division okay, okay. so they will form a ventral division and a dorsal uh, dorsal division okay so red is indicating the dorsal division and uh, green is indicating the ventral division okay so next we've seen the divisions divisions next will come the chords so how are these chords formed so if you see carefully these are the green is indicating the ventral division and this is the dorsal division okay here i have drawn the dorsal division here and this is the ventral division now if you see carefully what is happening next is so the ventral divisions ventral divisions of the upper and middle trunk upper and middle trunk okay they are uniting to form the lateral cord lateral cord of brachial plexus okay next the ventral division of the lower cord which is there it is continuing as the medial cord of brachial plexus now the dorsal divisions of the three chords upper middle and lower chord are forming the posterior chord of brachial plexus okay you understood the ventral divisions of the upper and middle trunk are uniting to form the lateral cord so this is the lateral cord of brachial plexus okay the ventral division of the lower uh, trunk is continuing as the medial cord of brachial plexus and the dorsal divisions of the three cords they are uniting to form the posterior cord of brachial plexus posterior cord of brachial plexus okay so now what happens next now we have seen the cords next these cords will give off the branches so what are the branches which are given off so we will use uh, another color for ease okay so the branches given off by the lateral cord we'll see first it will give a lateral pectoral nerve and it will give off uh, the musculocutaneous nerve and finally it will continue as the lateral root of median nerve lateral root of median nerve okay so what are the branches this is the lateral pectoral nerve Then you have got the musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve. Okay, those are the branches given off by the lateral cord. Next, we will have a look at the medial cord. So, the medial cord will give off a branch which is called as medial pectoral nerve. Okay, then it will give off medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm okay and it will give off the medial root of median nerve so we have got the lateral root of median so it will give off medial root of median nerve and then it will continue as the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve okay so what are the branches given off by the medial cord first one is the medial pectoral nerve next is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm cutaneous nerve of arm okay next branches medial cutaneous nerve of forearm okay then it is giving the medial root of median nerve 
and then finally this uh, uh, medial cord is continuing as the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve okay so now this lateral root of median and medial root of median they will unite to form the median nerve so this is the formation of the median nerve okay next coming to the branches of the posterior cord posterior cord so branches of the posterior cord first is upper subscapular nerve then you have got the thoracodorsal nerve lower subscapular nerve axillary nerve and finally this posterior cord will continue as the radial nerve okay so what are the branches of posterior cord upper subscapular nerve thoracodorsal nerve lower subscapular nerve axillary nerve and finally it is continuing as the radial nerve radial nerve okay so i'll just repeat okay so the brachial plexus it is formed by the ventral rami of c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 roots okay so ventral primary rami of c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 are uniting to form the brachial plexus so uh, these roots which are there the roots which are there they are present in between two muscles scalenus anterior and scalenus medius scalenus medius okay so these are located in between these two muscles next the c5 and c6 are uniting to form the upper trunk upper trunk okay and c7 is continuing as the me, uh, middle trunk c8 and t1 are uniting to form the lower trunk so there are three trunks upper middle and lower so these trunks which are there the trunks they are located in the posterior triangle of the neck posterior triangle of neck okay next these uh, if you see the upper trunk is formed by the union of c5 and c6 so it will have the root value c5 c6 the middle trunk which is there it will have a root value c7 because it is continuation of c7 the lower trunk which is there which is formed by the union of c8 and t1 it will have a root value c8 and t1 okay next they are further dividing into ventral division and a dorsal division okay ventral division and a dorsal division so these divisions which are there they are present at the level of the clavicle behind the clavicle okay so the brachial plexus the branches of the brachial plexus which we see in the axilla is the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus that is the part of the brachial plexus which is present below the clavicle okay next you have got the cords these cords are located in the axilla axilla so the cords are also given their names lateral medial and posterior in relation to their positions with the axillary artery second and third parts of axillary artery so the cord which is present lateral to the second part of axillary artery is the lateral cord the one which is present medial to the axillary uh, second part of axillary artery is the medial cord and the one which is present posterior is the posterior cord okay and then in the axilla the branches are given off okay so uh, the part of the brachial plexus which we see in the axilla is the infraclavicular part of brachial plexus okay so the ventral divisions of upper and middle trunk will unite to form the lateral cord lateral cord so this lateral cord will have a root value of c5 c6 and c7 okay next the uh, ventral division of the lower cord is continuing as the medial cord so it will have a root value c8 and t1 c8 and t1 so the dorsal divisions of all the three 
uh, upper, middle and lower trunks. Okay. They are uniting to form the posterior cord. So, that will have a root value of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Okay. Now, from the lateral cord. Now, we are done with the uh, cords. So, we will have a look at the branches. From the lateral cord, the first branch given off is the lateral pectoral nerve. Now, this lateral pectoral nerve, it will pierce the clavipectoral fascia and it will supply the pectoralis major and minor muscles. Next, you next branch given off is the musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve. Now, this musculocutaneous nerve, it will pierce the corcobrachialis muscle and it will supply the muscles of your arm. It will supply biceps, it will supply corcobrachialis and it will supply brachialis and then it will continue as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So that is why it has got its name musculocutaneous nerve. And then other branch given off is the lateral root of median nerve. This is the lateral root of median nerve. So the branches of the lateral cord are uh, remembered like LML. LML. Lateral pectoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve. Next, the branches of the medial cord. They are 5 in number. 5 in number. So, this actually is remembered like M, 4, U. So, there are 4 M's and 1 U. Okay. So, what are the 4 M's? First one is the medial pectoral nerve. So, the medial pectoral nerve, it will pierce the pectoralis minor muscle and it will supply minor and major muscles. Then, you have got the medial cutaneous nerve of Arm. So, this will give the cutaneous nerve supply to the medial part of your arm. Next branch given out is the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm which will give the cutaneous nerve supply to the medial half of the forearm. Then you have got the medial root of median nerve. Medial root of median nerve. So, this will unite with the lateral root of median nerve to form the median nerve. And finally, the uh, medial cord will continue as the ulnar nerve. This ulnar nerve which is there, it will supply to a few muscles in the forearm, anterior compartment of forearm. So, that is uh, it will supply the uh, medial half of the pronator uh, quadratus and it will supply the flexor carpi ulnaris in the forearm and then finally its major supply is in your hand. It will supply almost 15 intrinsic muscles of the hand and it will supply the medial one and a half fingers cutaneous nerve supply to the medial one and a half fingers and the medial part of your palm and of course the dorsum dorsum of the medial one and a half fingers as well okay so that is the ulnar nerve next the branches of the posterior cord so posterior cord first branch given off is the upper uh, subscapular nerve so, upper subscapular nerve which is there, it will supply the upper half of subscapularis muscle. Then you have got the thoracodorsal nerve, thoracodorsal nerve. So, this thoracodorsal nerve will supply the latissimus dorsi. Then you have got the lower subscapular nerve which will supply the lower half of the subscapularis muscle and the ter uh, teres major and then you have got the axillary nerve which will supply the deltoid muscle and teres major. And finally the posterior cord will continue as the radial nerve. So this radial nerve which is there, it will uh, supply the muscles in the posterior compartment of your arm. Okay. And uh, it uh, supplies the uh, posterior compartment of forearm. And finally it will give cutaneous nerve supply to the dorsum, uh, dorsum of your hand that is the lateral three and a half fingers. Okay. So, that is about the radial nerve. Now, what about this median nerve which is formed by the union of lateral root of median and uh, medial root of median nerve. So, this median nerve which is there, it will uh, supply the muscles of the anterior compartment of forearm. It will supply the superficial as well as the deep muscles except those two which are supplied by the ulnar nerve. And it will supply the cutaneous nerve supply to your palm. That is the lateral half of the palm and lateral 
three and a half fingers uh, they get the cutaneous nerve supply from this median now and out of the 20 intrinsic muscles in your hand 15 are supplied by the ulnar nerve and 5 are supplied by the median nerve okay so this is about the uh, branches of the brachial plexus which are given off from the cords now you have got few branches which will arise from the roots as well okay so what are those branches so from the c5 c6 and c7 okay c5 c6 and c7 so they will unite to form the long thoracic nerve of bell so long thoracic nerve of bell so this will supply the serratus anterior muscle okay next one more branch which is given off from c5 is dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve okay next branches given off from the upper trunk upper trunk so there are two nerves one is uh, suprascapular nerve and other one is nerve to subclavius suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius okay so this point actually which is there is called as herbs point herbs point where six nerves are actually meeting okay so c5 c6 roots then you have got the suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius and the ventral and dorsal divisions of the upper trunk so these six nerves they are uniting at a point which is referred to as herbs point herbs point okay so this is uh, clinically important when this uh, part gets damaged it will lead to herbs paralysis herbs paralysis okay so uh, we'll just have a quick review of all the branches once so the branches from the roots are the dorsal scapular nerve which has got a root value c5 it will supply the rhomboidus muscles and levator scapulae then uh, you have got one more branch from the roots that is uh, long thoracic nerve of bell which has got a uh, root value c5 c6 c7 and this will supply the serratus anterior and the nerves which will arise from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus are the suprascapular nerve which has got a root value c5 and c6 and this will supply the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle then you have got the nerve to subclavius which has got a root value c5 c6 and this will supply the subclavius muscle okay and uh, we'll just have a look at the branches also from the cords the branches from the lateral cord which has got a root value c5 c6 c7 the branches are the lateral pectoral nerve musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve you remember it like lml lml okay and uh, branches from the medial cord which has got a root value c8 t1 is the medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm medial root of median and ulnar nerve this you remember it like m 4 u m 4 u okay and uh, branches of the posterior cord which carries the root value c5 c6 c7 c8 t1 are upper subscapular thoracodorsal nerve lower subscapular nerve axillary nerve and radial nerve okay so this you can remember it like ultra or altar altar okay okay so these are the uh, branches which are given off from the cords of the brachial plexus okay so with this we come to an end of the anatomy of the brachial plexus so hope you all have uh, enjoyed watching the video. Thank you all for watching the video.